It's that time that uh, so many wait for every Friday morning, 8.30-ish. It's uh, Dr. Bob time. Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. Here's Dr. Robert A. Heineman, political science professor emeritus, Alfred University. Thank you, Brian. Try to get the weekend off on the right foot around here. Yeah. Big reunion in Alfred this weekend. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. It's a reunion weekend. That's great. Well, it can, it can be. We'll see. Well, now, looks you good. weren't an Alfred University student, right? I was not. Yeah, no. that's what I thought. My wife was, however. She's a graduate of Alfred University. Now, um, she's, and uh, she's a nurse. Did they have nursing majors back then? No, she got her nursing degree from Alfred State uh, and then went on and got... Uh, Degrees, uh, master's degrees and such from Alfred University. Gotcha. Well, Doc, I think uh, that we should start out with the uh, State Senator Kathy Young seat race. That uh, primary coming up this month on the 25th. And it's uh, a a local guy running against the Chautauqua County guy. The local guy is Allegheny County Legislator Kurt Crandall. And the Chautauqua County uh, candidate is... uh, Republican George Borello, there'll be a GOP primary, as like I said, on the uh, 25th. Your thoughts on the race? What's the latest? Well, the latest, uh, Brian, is that uh, uh, Legislator Graves uh, from Allegheny County has a piece in uh, this week's uh, Cuba Patriot, which uh, I really encourage people uh, to take a look at. I think it's probably going to show up in a number of other uh, media uh, spots. But uh, Mr. Graves has... uh, confirmed uh, a lot of the assumptions that we had been making about this race uh, pretty much from the beginning, and that is that uh, Mr. Borrello was a hand-picked candidate for Mr. Flanagan and Mr. Akshar. As you know, Mr. Akshar called our county chair and told him uh, they didn't want Crandall in the race. They wanted him uh, out. They didn't want a primary in the 57th district. Now, these are the guys that... uh, went after Kathy Young when she spoke out and basically uh, encouraged her or uh, sort of, I wouldn't say forced, but uh, persecuted her to the point where she just resigned uh, from the state Senate. But what's interesting is that Mr. Graves has obtained uh, the uh, report to the uh, Board of Elections of the New York State Republican Campaign Committee. And uh, we've seen that uh, on a number of Mr. Borello's ads, uh, he has the ads say sponsored and paid for by the New York State Republican Senate Campaign Committee, which, of course, is run by Flanagan and Akshar. Uh, So we've assumed that uh, Mr. Borello basically was handpicked by uh, Flanagan. And I think uh, the way it's looking more and more as though... uh, They told him, hey, uh, you run, we'll see that you get elected. We'll just put you in the 57th uh, Senate uh, District. But um, what's happened has been in these uh, uh, reports to the uh, State Board of Elections, Mr. Graves has discovered that the New York State Republican uh, Senate Campaign Committee has been spending a considerable amount of money in Chautauqua County and a little bit more, in, a little bit in Cattaraugus. But uh, the New York State uh, Senate Republican Campaign Committee has spent some, uh, uh, thir- it's about $3,100 at various restaurants and bars in Chautauqua County. And uh, as Mr. Grace points out, the names speak for themselves. The Wine Cellar, the Cherry Lounge, the Beer Snob, Shaw Bucks, Southern Tier Empty Pint have all been getting money from the Southern uh, the Senate Campaign Committee. And what's happened here, and Graves doesn't follow up on that in here because he doesn't have all the information uh, that we have, but if you look at the uh, petitions that were filed for Mr. Uh, uh, Borello, uh, the people who carried those petitions were notaries from other counties. So what they do uh, what Mr. Flanagan does uh, is he tells the staff of the other Republican senators, those that are left, you get out there to Chalkett County and you get Borello on the ballot. So uh, there's uh, 
people from uh, Albany County, uh, from Chemung County, from uh, uh, downstate counties um, carrying petitions in Chautauqua County. And that's what this money's going for. It's basically to pay for their bills, their hotels, and their mileage. And it looks like they um, imbibe uh, pretty heavily, uh, which seems to be a characteristic of the leadership there in the Republican State Senate. Um, so uh, the fact is uh, the New York the Senate Campaign Committee has been spending a lot of money uh, basically to support Mr. Borello. And um, there's a number of questions uh, that are raised immediately. I mean, why in a primary is the money contributed to the New York State Senate Committee being used for just one candidate? Um, are there any rules against that? No, they they can do that if they want. But why would you sub, why would you contribute money to the New York State Senate Campaign Committee when they turn around and they use it for just one candidate in the primary? Now I the, think I know the answer to the question I'm about to ask. But who runs the state Senate campaign? That's Flanagan and Ash, Akshar. Okay. They're the ones that. Uh, so the point is. Uh, the overriding point is here, why spend any money at all? Obviously, a Republican is going to win that seat. Uh, so whether Crandall wins or Borrello Bur- wins, you're going to have a Republican uh, winning the general election. So why are you in there spending money uh, and a considerable amount of money when you add it all up um, for this particular uh, primary? Which, again, uh, typically the party stays out of primaries. And, and once uh, the, the voters have decided who's going to be the nominee, then the party comes in and in the general election. But uh, that, that in itself is unusual. But apparently as well, they have been paying for the Facebook uh, advertising that uh, Mr. Borello has been do- using, uh, something up to $1,500. And uh, so they've also been paying for that. Now what... It's really uh, hip, uh, hypocritical about this whole thing is that Mr. Borello is running ads saying that he is running against the people in Albany, that he will not be uh, hostage to the Republican or Albany leadership when they're paying for his campaign. I mean, this is just incredible. That's now, not I'm, an uncommon political trip, uh, trick in Washington. Indeed. To speak against Wall Street and have a lot right. of Wall Street and, then, and Right, and end up getting financed by Wall Street. Now, we're watching that here, and uh, so the, uh, the point is, uh, Mr. Borello, who I think is a very decent guy, don't get me wrong, but obviously I don't have any use for either Akshar or uh, Flanagan. And uh, Can I so, and let me you? say also, there's that nobody from Steuben County carried petitions over in Chautauqua County, nor did anybody from Livingston County. So uh, those counties, uh, you know, state obviously county Livingston County's in part of it's in the district. But but let me say, let me point out finally there that in terms of the report to the uh, state board of uh, elections, Mr. Borello uh, reported that he had spent. A total of thirty-three dollars and sixty-one cents on the campaign so far. So uh, it gives you an idea that the overwhelming expenditures are coming from Mr. Flanagan and Mr. Akshar. Uh, and I think you know, uh, again, people can choose who they want, but they should be aware that uh, this is uh, who's financing Mr. Borello, and it does give you a feeling that. Uh, Mr. Burrell will be very sensitive to what Mr. Flanagan wants if if he wins. Can I ask you a couple of Sh- questions? Sure. Starting out with the beginning of this article from the Cuba Patriot, Cuba uh, Patriot. by Carl Graves, the Allegheny County Legislator. Uh, it says here that Ashkar called Senator Young a poor leader and said she was incapable of leading the Senate minority and that Ashkar, Akshar, excuse me, Senator Fred Achkar and Senator John Flanagan uh, are the architects of Senator Young's departure from the state Senate. Tell me about that. What I, I know about Flanagan, but th- this Binghamton Senator Achkar, what he do? Well, he's a minority uh, whip. He's the assistant to Flanagan in the uh, what's left of the state Senate Republicans, uh, and uh, he uh, he of course is a fellow that was involved in some. I think some very serious professional and ethical issues as a 
a deputy when he was investigating this, the murder of this lady's son and then was having an affair with her, uh, which he says was consensual, uh, it does raise some pretty serious ethical questions, I think, about the guy. But uh, he uh, obviously did not get along with, uh, along with uh, Senator Young at all. And, of course, she challenged uh, Senator Flanagan for the leadership spot, and there, Flanagan is doing everything he can to eliminate any kind of any vestige of uh, young support out in this area. So you have one of the uh, most popular state senators we've ever had here. Yeah. And these guys are just ripping her every chance. And anybody who supported her. Uh, A couple of questions there. One, their dislike of Kathy Young obviously comes from uh, Young running against... uh, Senator Flanagan for the Senate Majority Leadership post. But no, no, also no, no, minority, minority leadership. Minority leadership. Yeah. Uh, but they used to be the majority. Sorry about that. Now they're the minority. Other c- question, though. Uh, could it be possible that they were anti-Young because Young is more conservative than Flanagan and Akshar? Well, I think uh, that's certainly true with regard to Flanagan. Uh, Young did not vote, for example, for the uh, SAFE Act. And Flanagan, of course, did vote for the SAFE Act and was one of the key people uh, in terms of getting uh, the SAFE Act passed. Without Flanagan's support, it would never have passed. And uh, Young did not, certainly did not support that. Uh, and all, she did take a lot of criticism uh, when uh, she supported uh, Flanagan two or three years ago for a majority leadership position. Um, on the other hand, she was on the, the major committees in the Senate for quite a period of time. But I think the point is... Um, she was very critical about some of the behavior that was going on there, and uh, that uh, she was removed from uh, the campaign position, which she basically ran the Senate. Uh, and, per- re- and did a great job. Yeah, did a fine job. And I mean, to have a majority for New York State, right, the state right. Senate for the Republicans, is a pretty amazing thing. She right. had to do a lot of political yes. work there. No, no, right? she's good. And, uh, so, but they removed her uh, from that position in the middle of the summer last year, and you can see the results. The results have been disaster. So you could say, you know, with Flanagan, well, he's not a nice guy. I don't have any use for him. Well, all right, is 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 he doing? A, is he halfway success? He's a disaster for the Republicans. So uh, uh, then he turns around and says, uh, well, we'll put George Borrello in the 57th Senate district. Well, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Uh. Yeah, uh, I have another question here. Um, Carl Graves in his article talks about. Uh the Borello, uh, I don't know if he says the Borello campaign or Borello himself, whatever. It says that uh, that a lot of money was spent in bars in uh, Chautauqua County. Now, were these were these campaign visits to these bars, or is this just going out and having a good time and charging? The no, these are campaign? these are undoubtedly uh, the people who were brought in to carry the petitions to get uh, Borello on the ballot. And so they had the hotels and motels they stayed at, and they obviously, you know, had themselves a pretty good dime, I assume, uh, while they were there. No, this isn't campaign meetings. Or, do you know where, the, where they're from, what county? Yeah, I do. They, they're listed on the petitions. So if you take a look at the petitions that Borrello uh, filed uh, with the State Board of Elections, the, the people who carried the petitions have to witness and sign at the bottom. And so... There's uh, there's eight different counties that they came from. Any local counties? And then that's what I'm saying. There was, uh, I think, somebody from Erie County, Niagara County, uh, but none from Livingston, none from Sioux Bend. Uh, and uh, then, you, then you get over toward Albany, Albany County, and uh, the people. But see what these people are? These people are staff people in the Senate. And uh, so they're told that they got to get out and, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised come June 25th they'll be told they got to get out here and start doing door-to-door or uh, phone banks or whatever. I don't know. I'll tell you, uh, I was up in Albany, and one day they had a big uh, race up in the North Country. I'm not certain whether it was a congressional race or, or a Senate race. And the parking lot in the state uh, building was empty. I mean, everybody was out uh, because they'd been told they've got to get out there and— uh, campaign um so that's you know that's not that unusual in that sense but it is unusual in a primary for this kind of thing to happen 
or uh, the leadership there, or what's left of the leadership, picking a candidate and saying, here, uh, we're going to push this guy through. And, of course, they picked a guy that's as far away from everybody in the district as you can get, way up in the northwestern corner of the 57th of Chautauqua County. I mean, um, so... You know, I like the conclusion of this uh, article by uh, Allegheny County Legislator Carl Graves. The only one that Kathy Young ever owed was her constituents, her constituents, and she paid them back at every opportunity. Yeah, it's certainly true. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever you went, there she was. And, you know, how often are you going to see Mr. Borello? I don't think, if he wins, I don't think you're going to see much of him at all. I mean, that's a long way for him to be traveling from... She was a hard worker with a big heart, and I think that uh, she was also, you could say, an original. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, in many ways that's true. Uh, her, her ability as a politician and uh, as a legislator were, uh, I mean, they're pretty incredible, pretty incredible combination. Um, so, at any rate, I, I just think uh, Carl Graves uh, and uh, nobody, anyone who knows Carl and me <laughs> knows that we don't often get along. Uh, we're often on opposite sides of a lot of things, but uh, this is a very fine piece that he's put together, and I think we'll be following up on this with some additional information, and um, the voters can decide for themselves uh, what way they want to go on this. But these are facts. I mean, they, these are f- facts filed with uh, the State Board of Elections, so it's not like uh, Carl's making these things up. On the bar thing, if I could say this, I was, uh, and not to be a prohibitionist here, but I was at the Donald Trump uh, uh, event when he went, came up to the Buffalo area at a, a big restaurant there, and he spoke right. to a lot of uh, Republican Party right. officials. I remember that, yes. I found, uh, I was uh, with the reporter standing up in the back. And fortunately, I had put a microphone down on the uh, podium where Trump spoke. And I say fortunately because there were all these people standing right behind me. The bar was right behind uh, the guys with the cameras. And mumble, 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 paying no attention to Donald Trump, who uh, conceivably would have been the best chance for the GOP in that particular year. Yes. Well, I uh, and, and, and I'm, I, all I can think to myself is, what, what you got this world famous guy here, and you guys are at the bar. What's going on? Well, he thinks of himself. He thought of himself as world famous at that time. I'm not sure, but he certainly is now. Uh, but no, I uh, not to get too far off the subject here, but I used to be the floor manager for our Constitution Day dinner in Rochester at um, uh, the Diplomat. Um, where we, uh, which got to, we had four or five hundred people there uh, for the dinner and a speaker and everything, and you just had to shut the bar off. You just had to, I, I just would tell the, of course, the bartender's more than happy to continue ladling out right. the drinks. But no, that's it, buddy. Yeah, that's it. I found it incredibly annoying because I was trying to get good audio. Yeah, well, and, and these guys, uh, and all these and guys, some of them get, yeah. some of them have serious drinking problems, as does Mr. Flanagan, the, the leader of the Republicans, uh, and uh, you know they're uh, they're hitting the sauce pretty heavily, but uh, in any case, this that's not directly relevant to the issue there with the uh, 57th district. These guys are undoubtedly um, stay. You know they're staying overnight. They're finding a place to go drink and ha- uh, and you know. So I mean I don't I'm not saying that this is uh, by any means. Uh, over the over the top or anything of that sort. They went to good restaurants, as, as uh, Graves says. Uh, but why is the uh, state Senate Republican campaign committee paying for this in a primary? That's the question. Why why even take that kind of money to do that when you know a Republican's going to win? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they picked Borello, and uh, they're uh, they're out there uh, working for him. And he, he the thirty three dollars and sixty one cents that he spent. I guess he can can afford that. Uh, We're going to take a quick break. We're going to talk about the tariffs uh, against Mexico when we get back. Stay with us. 
The Ryan Agencies, your local, independent insurance agencies. The Ryan Agency is not beholden to any one insurance company. They work with many companies, offering unbiased insurance advice. Their interest is seeking your best interest. Contact the Ryan Agencies, good people, offering unbiased advice, seeking your best interest. Insurance protection you can rely on. Bob, uh, these tariffs uh, that Trump is talking, uh, putting against uh, Mexico, putting on Mexico, that got some attention it from did. Mexican officials pretty quick. Yes. Well, it got some attention from the Republicans in the, st- in the U- uh, U.S. Senate, too. Uh, they unanimously uh, told Trump uh, they were against it. But I think Trump may have a certain level of executive power to do this on his own. But you're right. Uh, the Mexicans... I've got that message, and uh, from what I've seen in the papers and such, they're down there uh, running uh, the Guatemalans and everyone back across the border. Um, so, and I don't blame the Mexicans. Uh, they don't need this extra um, burden here, uh, given, the, first of all, the, the immigrants got to be a, a problem, and then you've got Trump pounding on them from the other side. So... Uh, I think uh, you can see where the Mexicans are coming from. But what is kind of interesting about this whole thing is I think Trump has uh, decided that uh, the United States economy is a tremendous weapon out there in the world. And uh, he's not interested in going to war, and I think clearly not interested in going to war, although I think he will if he has to. But uh, clearly the uh, use of American economic power is... uh, a pretty hefty threat, and uh, Mexico can see that, uh, and you can see that the Chinese can see that too, and uh, there are other areas, obviously, where we put economic sanctions on places like North Korea and Iran and some of these other areas, but uh, just throwing the tariffs in there would uh, be a tremendous burden on the Mexicans. It would hurt the United States too. I mean. I, I just hope it doesn't come come to pass, but uh, he's clearly serious about uh, this immigration issue, and uh, the, and I think unhappy that uh, Mexicans haven't been all that cooperative. Doctor Bob, final question for you. Oh yes. Uh, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is speaking out, uh, and in a pretty noticeable way, too, against the idea of Paul Manafort getting uh, solitary confinement. She came out against that. Yes, I'm not all that familiar with uh, what kind of confinement Manafort has. I, it's clear he's being put in a separate uh, area uh, in in the uh, prison. I guess he's in prison. He's not at Rikers Island, is he? I, I don't think. But in any case... Uh, I assume that the prison authorities are doing this for his own protection. I don't think they're doing this uh, as an added punishment. And uh, so uh, Cortez is basically, uh, I think, arguing that he should be thrown in with the general prison population. And that would not be, that would not be good for Mr. Manafort. So, uh, Do you think this sentence is a bit heavy considering the offense? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, But there is a whole uh, area in criminal justice uh, arguing that uh, solitary confinement in and of itself is cruel and unusual. Uh, and uh, the courts have dealt with this time and time again, and uh, they have held it's not. But you do have to have certain procedures and things of that sort before you start throwing people into solitary Um, so, because some of these people are very, very dangerous people, and you've got to have some way of protecting the rest of the prison population as well as keeping these guys under control. So, so I'm not sure. We'd have to look into Cortez's, uh, reasoning there a little deeper, and it may well be that she's, it's not that she's against solitary confinement. It's, she wants this guy out among the rest of the hoi polloi a lot of insights today from Dr. Robert A. Heineman. A lot of behind-the-scenes information that uh, is 
not well, available elsewhere. Well, with Mr. Graves' article, I think we brought a little bit of it out from behind the scenes. Dr. Indeed. Bob, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for asking me, Brian.